Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight, inshallah, we're going to uh, discuss Surah An Nahl, Ayah 28 through 32, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an wa ala sayyidihim wa khatamihim, habibi ilahi al alameen, abil qasim al Mustafa Muhammad. <coughs> وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة ظالمي أنفسهم فألقوا السلم ما كنا نعمل من سوء بلى إن الله عليم بما كنتم تعملون فادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فلبئس مثوى المتكبرين وقيل للذين اتقوا ماذا أنزل ربكم قالوا خيرا للذين أحسنوا في هذه الدنيا حسنة ولدار الآخرة خير ولنعم دار المتقين جنات عدن يدخلونها تجري من تحتها الأنهار لهم فيها ما يشاءون كذلك يجزي الله المتقين الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة يقولون سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العلي العظيم At the time of death, people are going to experience different feelings. They are not all the same. Moment of death is different depending on who you are. What is the level of your commitment? How much you prepared for this day? Were you aware of this day and what will happen after it or not? So the feeling is different. Maybe two brothers, two friends die, a husband and wife. They die, but each one is going to experience a different feeling at the moment of death. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wasalam says, أشد الساعات على ابن آدم ثلاث The most difficult and critical moments upon us are three moments in our entire life. Three moments. These are the most difficult. Number one, ساعة يرى فيها ملك الموت The moment we see the angel of death, we see him. We know he's a present. This is a very difficult moment. Angel of death 
does not visit people just to socialize with them. He didn't even visit prophets or messengers to socialize with them because he's very busy, super busy, this man, this angel is super busy. So when he visits someone, it means I'm taking you with me. He visited King Solomon, Suleiman, alayhi salam. Suleiman thought the angel is today is visiting him, just paying him a visit, you know, asking him, how are you doing today? So he said to him, Jaitani za'iran am qabila. Are you here just to socialize, have a cup of coffee? Or here to, are, are you on a business trip? He said, unfortunately, I'm on a business trip. I don't have time for a cup of coffee. I came to receive your soul. So this is one minute, one, one moment, the moment of death. When this soul that has been here for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, whatever, is leaving now is being separated from your body. This process is not easy. It's not easy. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, if, if the person who's washing the dead body, if that person can hear, he would hear something very strange, that he would never wash another body of any other deceased person. If he can hear what the deceased is telling him, he's telling him, Rifqan bi, fawallah ma kharajatu ruhu min udwan min a'dai badani illa wan fasala dalika al udu minni. When they put him on the, what they call it, the, the thingy where they wash the dead in the muhtasal, the dead is going to tell him, please. Be extra careful with me because at the time of when my soul was leaving the body, I felt whenever the soul left the arm, the leg, the tummy, the chest, the head, I felt that organ, that part of body is being severed, is being severed. Imagine the pain. People suffer when their arm is being severed. Too much pain. So you, please, be careful with my body. I don't tolerate any more pain. I had my enough share of pain. So this is the first moment. The second, when they put us in the grave. And you've seen what they do. When they put us in the grave, if you go to the cemetery at the time of burial here, here in America, in California, in this state, they cover the grave with a lead. That lead is so heavy, a bulldozer can carry it only. That lead is made of concrete, solid concrete. I don't know how much it weighs, really. Too heavy. When they shut the grave, that is the second most terrifying moment in our life. The second most terrifying experience. The third, the day of resurrection. After so many years, it could be 200 years, it could be 2,000 years, it could be 2 million years. We really don't know. The hour of resurrection, the knowledge about the hour of resurrection lies only with God. Only God knows when is the day of resurrection. That moment also, when we are resurrected, Uriyanan, Dhalilan, Hamilan, Thiqli ala dhahri, Imam Zayl Abidin says in Dua, Dua Abi Hamza in the month of Ramadan. Uriyanan, naked. Dhalilan, ter terrified. I have no one around me. No friends, no people that I recognize, no family members. No family members. You don't recognize the people around you. أنظر مرة عن يميني وأخرى عن شمالي. إذا الخلائق في شأن غير شأني. I seek some help. I turn to the right. I turn to the left, trying to find someone to give me something, some water, some food, some drink, some shelter, some clothing. 
Each one of them is busy with his or her own self. <laughs> Nobody has time to answer you. I've seen this in some countries when something happens, people are running. If you are trying to ask people for help, nobody pays attention to you because he's busy with his own ordeal. So these are three moments. Here in 28, Surah An-Nahl, verse 28, الْمَلَائِكَةِ Who receives our souls? The angel. Either the supreme angel of death himself, sometimes the main surgeon comes. And he does the surgery, main surgeon. And sometimes he sends his students. They do the surgery. Sometimes Malakul Maut, the angel of death, receives the souls. And sometimes the angels are assigned this task to receive and take our souls. Now, there are two types of people. Let's listen to what happens to the first type. The sinners, the wrongdoers. Valimi and Fusihim. While they were wronging themselves. He didn't say wronging others. God is saying they wronged themselves. Valimi and Fusihim. Why? Because one, even if a person is wronging others, is wronging his wife, his family, his neighbors, his friends, in fact, he's wronging himself too. Because God says in this book, If you do, if you do an atom weight of good deed, you will see the result. You are doing it to others, but you're going to earn the credit. You will see the result of your good deeds. And if you decide to do an atom weight of evil to others, you're going to receive the evil. You're going to see it in your life, experience it. It goes back at you. Our deeds, even though we are hurting others, even if we are hurting others, at the end of the day, this hurt is going to come and hunt us down. It will get back on us. God says, I have given you this life to help yourself and help others. Not to hurt others and hurt yourself. This life, this life is a window of a few years for us to work so we can pass to the other one. We are not staying here. No one can stay here. I bet you if you eat the best food, the healthiest food, if you live in the healthiest environment, you breathe the healthiest air, pure oxygen and you have family members friends assistants money everything you cannot delay your departure one single minute not even one single minute you cannot delay your departure doesn't matter what you eat what you this the departure we think that the healthy food is going to give me two two more years if i live in this country the average age of people here is 74, 75, there is 52. We think, God says, when you are born, I wrote the date of departure for you. Nowadays, when you buy tickets, airline tickets, when you book airline tickets, you have to put the date of return. Otherwise, it will be very expensive. The date of departure, outgoing, outbound, outbound and inbound. The return ticket too. The return date, you have to put it. God puts the return date from day one. Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata who created death and life. So our destiny has been predetermined at the moment of our creation. Sometimes God is going to change the date. Sometimes, not for everyone. Sometimes. Sometimes, if you are dutiful to your parents, God says, because this person is dutiful to his mother, to his father, I'm going to give him a bonus. A bonus. But that bonus is five years, 10 years, 20 years. And if, if, if he insults his mother, if that person is annoying harassing disrespecting insulting 
his parents, I'm going, I'm going to decrease and change the name and make it earlier. Zalimi anfusihim. Now, those wrongdoers in this life, they are arrogant. They are defying the truth. They don't listen. They are irresponsible. They are reckless. But at the moment of death, when they see the angel of death and they know that they are leaving, they change. They try to change. They try to fool the angels. What do they say to the angels? فَأَلْقَوُ السَّلَمَ فَأَلْقَوُ السَّلَمَ مَا كُنَّا نَعْمَلُ مِنْ سُوءٍ they offer peace to the angels and they behave humbly before the angels. And then they lie. They say, Ma kunna na'malu min su. We didn't do any evil in our life. Have you seen when someone, when a kid, he destroys the house, then he sees his mother and he knows his mother is going to punish him. He says, I didn't do anything. Before even his mother is asking him, he tries to vindicate himself. No, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. This is what some sinners are going to say to the angels. The angels have not asked them anything. They saw the angel of death, so they offer them peace. And then they tell them with the humility and humbleness, and they are very kind and nice, in sharp contrast to how they lived in this life. They lived with arrogance, with defiance, Nobody even could tell them that what you are doing is wrong. Listen, wake up, be careful, don't do this. Nobody dared to speak to them. Now they are humble. They say to the angels, "Ma kunna na'malu min su." By the way, we didn't do anything bad. "Ma kunna na'malu min su." The angels are going to answer them, "Bala, nay." You are liars. In Allah Alimun Bima Kuntum Ta'alamun. Verily, God knows everything you did in this life. So you cannot deny. In this life, we may lie and deny. In the Akhirah, there, God knows everything. Your record is there. Your record shows everything you did with pictures. You know, sometimes there is these cameras, traffic cameras installed in the in the traffic lights so when you run the red light they take a picture so the judge and they send it to you they send it to DMV to you cannot deny you cannot deny they show you the picture same thing is going to happen there everything is recorded there are snapshots huh, made by God we cannot deny فَتْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمْ As a result, these are the gates of hellfire. Enter. خَالِدِينَ Wow, this is, this is very difficult. Eternalized. There is no parole. There is no pardoning. خالدين, forever. Those are the arrogance, by the way. Not any sinner. Arrogance. Arrogance. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَلَبِئْسَ مَثْوَ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ Evil indeed is the abode of the arrogance. Please note here that sinners sometimes serve a sentence and then they leave. But the arrogance, which is the, the mother of all sins and all evils, the arrogance are not going to be forgiven. Sometimes we do sin, we practice a sin out of an awareness. Sometimes we are naive unaware we have a moment of ghafla ghafla means forgetfulness we become too weak god says i'm going to forgive these sins but someone who's defying me out of arrogance he know this is wrong and still he says i don't care that person has no forgiveness now we come to the second group at the time of death the virtuous, the believers, the virtuous. وَقِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا The angels at the time of death are going to ask those virtuous, people who led a life of virtue, a life of content, a life of inner satisfaction, a life of service, 
a life of dedication. They helped others. They were nice to others. Like Haj Samir Amiri, this man. Believe me. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating. When I remember a person who dedicates his life at the expense of his health, I remember this man. He always gives. Anything you ask him, he never says no. Say it. I have no time. I'm tired. Even at the expense of his health, unfortunately. Those people of service and dedication, the angels are going to ask them, وَقِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبُّكُمْ What did you see your Lord sent down? قَالُوا خَيْرًا We saw goodness. Everything God sent down was goodness. Even the bad incidents, huh? even sickness, they say this is goodness. Even poverty, sometimes they experience poverty, calamities, loneliness, difficulties, hate sometimes, negligence, people neglect them. They say goodness. This is the inner satisfaction. When you look at the entire life as being goodness, because God is sitting there and he knows what's going on. You are under his protection. You are under his eyes. They don't complain. They say goodness. Mada anzala rabbukum. Qalu khaira, goodness. Lilladina ahsanu, for those who did good, ahsanu, they did ihsan, wholesomeness. Fi hadihi dunya hasana. See, my friends, I think last week or the week before, I said, those arrogance and defiance and corrupt are going to pay two prices twice. One in this life and one in the akhirah. This life is defeat. They're going to do. When they leave this life, they leave with a sense of defeat, with a sense of loss, even if they are multimillionaires. At the moment of death, they have hasra, pain in their heart, that we are losers. I wish I could have done otherwise. I wish I could have done better. I wish I could have avoided this destiny, this fate. They keep saying, I wish, I wish, I wish. So here, sense of defeat, and there is the greatest loss, Nar Jahannam. Same thing, my friends, the pious. Here, when they leave, they leave with satisfaction and enjoyment. Though they are dying, though they are dying, but they are happy. Surah Al-Fajr. What does God say in Surah Al-Fajr? Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna turji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marzi. O the soul that is tranquil and peaceful. Now go back to your Lord while you are satisfied and you are satisfying your Lord too. God does not allow us, if we are virtuous and pious, does not allow us to leave this life with pain with remorse, with regret. He's going to switch your pain into happiness at the time of departure. Radiyatan mardiyya. So they say, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً Those who do good are going to see good, hasana in this life. And, وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةِ For the hereafter, khair is much better than this life. The reward is much bigger. My friends, no matter how much God rewards you in this life, it's going to be taken away from you. If you have wealth, you die without your wealth. You are not going to take your wealth to the grave. If you have a properties and lands and skyscrapers, you are not going to take them. These are limited. Believe me, these things that we have, properties, cars, jewelry, money, these are toys. Sometimes those kids, you give them toys to keep them busy for two, three hours. God is giving us these toys and he's going to take them back. Believe me, these are not permanent. Don't think they are permanent. Don't get attached to them. Use them, but don't fall in love with them. Use your car, your house, your money, your jewelry, your traveling, your food, everything, everything, but don't get attached to it. Be ready to leave them, to abandon them. 
So, وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٌ For those who are virtuous in this world. And then, وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٌ Better. وَلَنِعْمَ دَارُ الْمُتَّقِينِ Excellent indeed the abode of the reverence. Muttaqeen. Then God describes part of this, a glimpse of what we're going to experience there. Number one, he says, Jannatu Adnin. Tajri, Jannatu Adnin, Yadkhulunaha Tajri Min Tahtiha Al-Anhar. Why does God, when he describes the paradise, he begins most of the times with the streams and rivers underneath your palace, your mansion. Why? We, we, have, we can answer this question better than others because we have a drought. We have a drought, lack of water here. When you have a drought, your mood is going to change. Not just your bill is going to go up, your water bill. <laughs> your mood is going to, to, to change. Everything is going to be expensive. Water is the genesis of what? Of life. Same thing in paradise. God says water first. And then tajri, flowing, is a reference to what? An indication of what? Continuity. When the water runs, this is continuity. Rather than being stagnant. Stagnant, there is no continuity. No movement, no motion. But when the, when, when the rivers are raging and moving, this is, this is a gesture of what? Continuity. تجري من تحتها الأنهار. This is number one. لهم فيها ما يشاءون. You can get anything you want. No reservation and no exception. There is, in paradise, the word no is not used in paradise. You throw it outside and then you go to paradise. In the vocabulary in paradise, there is no word which is called no. You don't get this. We don't have this. Sometimes in the airplane, they have fish, they have vegetarian, and they have the, the food, what we call it akl al-asafir, the bird's food, you know. They bring it to you. Bird's food, believe me. The bird's food that you buy them here in the market for those birdies, they give you this food. Sometimes when you ask for fish, the flight attendant is going to say what? We run out, sorry. Sorry. If we cannot fulfill your dream. So either you go hungry or, I don't know, you have to fight for your rights. So <laughs> in paradise, there is nothing called run out, no inventory, it's empty, the shelves is empty, there is no formula milks, there is no whatever, there is no, everything is available in abundance, anytime, 24-7. Of course, there is no day and night there. 24-7 is only here. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ If you want physical pleasure, it's available. Sensual pleasure, available. Intellectual pleasure, available. Spiritual, spiritual pleasure, available. Intellectual pleasure, av social pleasure, available. Whatever you need. No limitations. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ اللَّهُمْ مَرْزُقْنَا الْجَنَّةِ Pray always that we make it. We jump inside before they shut the door. That's it. You are good for the rest of your life. If you can make it there, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah ta'ala. وَلَنِعْمَ دَارُ لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ كَذَلِكَ يَجْزِ اللَّهُ الْمُتَّقِينَ Thus, does God recompense? This is recompensation for what you did here. You think when you stand for Fajr prayers at 4.30 a.m., 4.15 a.m., you deprive yourself of the sleep, there is no compensation for that. When you do the five daily prayers, there is no compensation. When you fast 30 days of Ramadan and the heat and the thirst and the hunger and the long days, there is no compensation. When you help someone, when you help the poor and the needy, when you give your zakat, your khums, your sadaqah, your charity, your smile, your help, there is no compensation. Impossible. If you do any act of goodness to any good person, at least that person is going to say thank you to you. 
And then he's going to look for an opportunity to give you back what you, what you have given him, to return the favor. And God does not. You think God does not return the favor? Does God recompense? God recompense the reverent. Let me read the last one and we conclude. Those, the same second group, that are received by the malaika tayyibin in a state of peace. They have no burden on their shoulders. They did not do any wrong to anyone. And if one day we do wrong to anyone, we have to go and apologize. We have to have the courage to say, I'm sorry, I insulted you, I hurt you, I annoyed you, I harassed you. I am here to apologize to you. Forgive me, please. We have to have the guts to do this. It's not aib. Don't think, no, this is belittling me. I am the great. I am Alexander the Great. How can I come to someone and say sorry to him? No. Teach your tongue to say sorry. I swear to God, my friends, one of the good things I learned here in the West when I came back from the East is to say sorry. In the East, nobody says sorry. Nobody, even if they shove you, you know, throw you into the bus, under the bus, they are not sorry. Here, sorry, 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 pardon me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. This is good. Good. This teaches us humility. Humility. We have to be kind with people. So those, They are peaceful. يَقُولُونَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ The first thing they hear from the malaika, if you hear malaika, keep this in your mind at the time of death. Huh? And I have to remember it. If angels coming to you smiling, number one, and say salamun alaikum. It means you are done, you got the visa. Khalas, don't worry. This is a sign. Salamun alaikum. Because if that person is arrogant and hypocrite, they are not going to say to him salamun alaikum. Once you hear this salamun alaikum, you are done, you got the visa. Salamun alaikum, utkhulu al jannata bima kuntum ta'amalun. Listen to this. Enter paradise for that which you used to do. What does that mean? Paradise, is it a free? It's not a free. Because of what you used to do here in this life. So you have to cherish your deed. Be careful with your deed. Be careful with your behavior. Your deed is going to determine whether you go into this side or that side. Whether you're going to go to paradise or otherwise. Your deed. Bima kuntum ta'amalun. You cannot say there, I am the son of this man, my father did this, my mother, my family, my tribe. No, 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 no. It's about your deeds. Only through your deeds you can make it. Now, there is some exception. Shafa'a is for those who did good most of the time, but sometimes they failed in some areas. Here the imams, the prophets, awliya are going to do shafa'a for them, intercede on their behalf. But remember what Imam Sadiq says. At the time of his death, he opened his eyes. He turned to Bani Hashim. He said, Ya Bani Hashim, La tanalu shafa'atuna yawm al-qiyamati mustakhiffan bi salatih. Remember, my shafa'a, the shafa'a of Ahlul Bayt, is not going to reach someone who did not take care of his prayers, who did not pray, who didn't take prayers seriously, who took prayers lightly. He's not going to receive our shafa'a. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi illahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. Inshallah tomorrow we have salatul jumu'ah at 1 p.m. inshallah ta'ala. Wa ajjil illahumma fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al zaman wa ila arwah al mu'minina wal mu'minat thawab al fatiha ma'as salati ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad.